Hello, students. Welcome uh, to Exploring Angle Pairs. Hello, friends. I didn't realize you were going to keep talking there, Mr. Carlson. Uh, yes, angle pairs. Let's explore them. Ooh. Ooh. We get to play with shapes. That's fun. What are these, like uh, tangrams or something? Uh, but they're not layered correctly. Oh. Um, Bring to front. There we go. They're still not layered correctly. Uh, shucks. Because they have, okay. Cool. This is an interesting question. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to talk about the question that goes with this because we can't actually do what we were supposed to do with this uh, because some of them have borders and some of them don't. <laughs> uh, so it asks, how could we use angles to help us do this? And to me, I'm going to think about the relationships. Like if I want to make a line with angles, I know I need 180 degrees. We talked about that uh, in our angles video. Uh, so that might be a way if I can get angles to add up to 180 that I could fit things in there. Uh, we also know that this is a square. And one of the things I know about squares is that they have right angles. So if we could find a way to make angles add up to 90, they'd fit into the corners really well. Um, Mr. Butterworth, did you have any luck while I was talking, turning I, those into better, or are we just going to give up? And we're just going to give up on that. Cool. Um, but I mean, you could put, so you could put, I also think it's a problem because I think when these are screenshot, they're different sizes than they're supposed to be. So I think this whole thing would be difficult, but um, the picture I would imagine is yeah, matching things up to make 90 degree angles basically and form like rectangles and squares within this rectangle sure. to make it all work. But if you have like tangrams or if you want to go on the internets or if you need to us to find those, we can find you tangrams to play with because they're pretty fun. There. All right, find the value of all the variables and the measures of all angles. Ooh, so exciting. I think we're gonna have to use the information that we have uh, based on knowing some of these angles to help figure some things out. I know where to start, Mr. Carlson. I where do you start? While you were thinking, or while you were talking. So I have a right angle right here. I just circled it. And I also have a straight line AD, which I didn't make a straight line when I did my little laser, but that's fine. But that means that we have a right angle right here at BFD. So I can write an equation that's 2x minus 5 plus 5x plus 1 equals 90 degrees. And that's because we know that all right angles equal 90 degrees. Correct. They're also congruent to one another. Hmm. Okay. So since those two make up that right angle, we can say they add up to 90. Yes. So those make 7x and those make negative 4. And then we're going to add 4 to both sides. So we're going to get 94 and x is going to be 94 over 7. I like it. Unpause. And that's an ugly number, but we have a calculator. We're going to be okay. So our next step is to notice this given right here. Ooh, so that's, a, that's useful information. Yeah, FD bisects. But I don't remember what bisects means. Can you tell me what bisects means? Well, because I know the ancient Greek, uh, I know that bi means two and sect means cut. So I think it means cut into two equal pieces. Had to go with the ancient Greeks, huh? Well, I made the reference last time, so I got to go with it again. It's true. So does that mean that 5x plus 1, right over here on the left, is equal to 13z plus 10? I think it does. Oh, but wait, we know what x is. So I could do 5 times 94 sevenths mm -hmm. plus 1, which is 68 and 1 seventh. Cool is 13z plus 10. I like it. Subtract 10, which is 58 and 1 seventh, and then divide by 13. That sounds epic. Which is going to be 
four, seven, and some garbage. Cool. You know, I bet that you can probably uh, keep going with that and do that because, you know, I may have to help a student. Okay. So I will keep rolling. Sounds good. Hopefully Mr. Carlson will not include us in his conversation. This whole angle is 180 degrees. So that means 11y plus 23 plus 13z plus 10 is 180. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 4.47 number that I got. I'm going to multiply by 13. That gets me back to that 58 and a seventh. So that's this number here, 58 and 1 seventh, because I did 13 times that 4.47 number, but I used the exact number. I'm going to add 10 to that, and I'm going to add 23 to that. So I'm going to have 11, nope, that's still the laser, 11y plus 91 and a seventh equals 180. So now I'm just going to do 180 minus 91 and a seventh. I'm going to have 88 in a bit and divide by 11. So that's going to give me 8.0, I'll call it 8.08. Now, it also says I need to find the measures of all the angles. So I'm going to do my best to do that. Let's see. So I do that 8.08 times 11 plus 23. So that's 111.8. Six, we'll call it. I'm just going to be lazy and subtract that from 180 and call this 68.14. So that AFE is 111.86 and DFE is 68.14. I also have the X value of 94 sevenths, so I'm going to do 2 times 94 sevenths and I'm going to get 26.86. I'll be less lazy here and I'll do five times 94 sevenths and then plus one and I got 68.14. And I, I realized as I wrote the 68.14 that I actually made a mistake because I forgot to subtract five from this number. So that should be 21.86. So we found the measure of all the angles. Oh, look, those are the same. I knew that already. I, I didn't even think to process that. I apologize. All right, so now we're gonna talk about some specific names of some angles that uh, we call angle pairs. Uh, the first one are adjacent angles. We may have used the word adjacent previously. That means next to. So if I have two angles that share a common side and a vertex, so there's our vertex. I like how you made that dot bigger to make sure I did. it showed up. Here's our common side. I made the side bigger too to make sure that it, it fits in there well. Uh, if I call these angles one and two, we'd say that angles one and two are adjacent. That's correct, that is the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> There's all this space over here on the right for a drawing and you just ignored it, it's fine. Um, vertical angles, so vertical angles are vertical from one another. So they look more like this. Now, the tricky part is one and two would be vertical, but so would three and four. Hmm. So either of those pairs is vertical. So it's when two lines or rays or segments cross and they're located directly across from each other. Yes, but not adjacent as you just mentioned. So like two and four in my picture are adjacent. That's not what I'm talking about. So two and one would be vertical or three and four would be vertical. Cool. Let's see what these words say. Two angles whose sides are opposite rays. Ooh, I like that. I like that as well. I'd have to add my, my arrows there. So it's opposite rays. So one ray goes like this, and the other ray goes like this, those are opposite rays. One ray goes like this, another ray goes like this, those are opposite rays. All right. 
next we get a complementary angle. Uh, and complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 degrees. So we're saying like if angle, the measure of angle A is 36 degrees and the measure of angle B is 54 degrees, because those numbers add up to 90, those would be complementary angles. So if, I, I'm, if I'm understanding you correctly, I could draw a picture like this, where this is 36 and this is 54, which is slightly different than what you said, because I think yours would not be connected to one another, it would not be adjacent. Maybe, but maybe I'm not. The, uh, with complementary angles, they don't have to be adjacent. Uh, but adjacent complementary angles would be angles that make a right angle, which is what we see there. It's kind of nice. So that's more, more along lines of what you meant. I also have a, a silly trick. Complementary starts with a C, and through a little bit of magic, you can turn a C into a nine. So oh, it's cool. 90. That's different magic than I have, uh, where a C can be turned into an S, if you have two of them, and uh -huh. supplementary angles are angles that add to 180 instead of 90. Because that S can be turned into an eight, 180. <laughs> Look at us with our magic, Mr. Kyle. I like it. We are the best. So you came up with A and B. I'm going to come up with C and D. Measure of angle C is going to be 100. And measure of angle D, I was lazy. I didn't, I didn't do anything spicy, is 80. So those make 180. Um, and what I like about the angles that we chose is that they're not exactly in the middle. One of the things that a lot of my students tend to do, and I'm assuming that yours do as well, is assume that all comp all complementary angles are always going to be 45 and 45. Uh, and by choosing these numbers as examples, we hope that maybe that is not the automatic assumption that you make. Makes sense. Uh, and then for drawing, uh, these could be like, here's my 100 degree angle, and here is my 80 degree angle. Or if they were adjacent, they might look something like this. I bet we have another name for that one. We do, but it's not coming yet. So you <sighs> to wait. Darn, I was hoping to be a little bit psychic there. You're trying. Now here, I think they should pause the video. Like, like like in, in, in 10 seconds when I finish, you should answer each of these things, say if they're true or not. And if they are true, explain why. And if they're not true, explain why not. I think that's an excellent plan. So they should have paused. Hope they did. So BFD, I'm going to use the laser. BFD and CFD are adjacent angles. I go with false. I also agree with false. Uh, there was a little uh, warning on the adjacent angles definition that said that they can't include uh, any interior points. And here we have one of those angles is inside the other angle, so that's why we can't use those. True. All right, I'll take a look at the next one. Okay. Uh, AFB, so that's this one, and EFD, that's this one are vertical angles. I think that's false. Is that because, is that a line? I can't tell. I think what you drew is. Oh, but it was A, it was. It's AFB. AFB, yeah, okay. So AFB goes that, that's, I, I forgot which one it was, thank you. So I was supposed to do that. Hey, let me draw. I was supposed to do this. That doesn't work, because that's not, those aren't opposite rays, which was in the definition. I agree. So that one is false. If they had picked AFC and EFD, hmm. then it would have been accurate information. Cool. All right, and you're up. AFE and BFC are complementary. Well, complementary, that's C, that turns into 90. 62 and 28. 2 and 8 make 10. 6 and 2 make 8. One more. Oh, yes, they are. True that. You speak truthiness. Hey, uh, we already kind of answered. Oh, no, I guess these are different. Uh, but AFE, so that's this one. I'm going to leave this one permanent like. And CFD are vertical. So we're looking at that one and that one. 
those are formed by uh, opposite rays and they're across from each other, therefore they are vertical. So that's true for me. I agree. BFC and DFE. That would be 28 and 8, 118 are supplementary. Nope. False. I didn't even bother because 8 and 8 don't make a zero, so there's no way we can get 180 out of that. I like it. And the last one, BFD and AFB. Ooh, are adjacent. So those are next to each other and they share a common side and they share a vertex. I'm going to say that's true as well. Love it. Ooh, what can we conclude from this information? This is a great question. This is a good geometry question because in geometry, we do a lot of things of trying to come to logical conclusions to things. Um, and in looking at this, uh, I agree that angle one and angle two appear to be congruent because they're marked with those arcs to show they are congruent. I'm um, going to say one. angle three and angle five are vertical. I like it. Are those the only vertical angles? Um, what if we called this one angle six? Oh, then six and four would also be vertical. Cool, so six would be built from one and two. Yes, and then the adjacent, there's like a bunch of adjacents, like one and two are adjacent, two and three are adjacent, three and four are adjacent, four and five are adjacent, five and one are adjacent. I was gonna let you keep going. I, I could. Uh, something else that I notice uh, is that like angle three and angle four together make a line. So I'm going to say that the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four is going to be 180 because we know that those add up to 180. Similarly, I started writing measure of angle four and measure of angle five are 180. Cool. Which actually, if, 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 they, if they use their brains in there, that gives a hint to some future knowledge. Yeah, and I'm kind of wondering if that's where the intent of this slide was going before we started this. Uh, because if I know these are both equal to 180, there's no way that can be true unless both of those things are equal to each other, right? Yes. So that angle three and angle four must be the same as the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle five. But don't sp spoil the fun for them. They got to think about that. Uh, and I bet we can do some more stuff with that. I bet we can. Cool. In future time. So this next page is just summary. So feel mm. free to pause, read through this, process whatever it is. If you have questions, write them down and ask us in class by all means. All right, so here's something that I kind of predicted a few slides ago where I said that we probably will have a name for things that are uh, both adjacent and together make up a line. We call these a linear pair because we are super unoriginal in naming things. They're a pair that, wait for it, makes up a line. That's it, that's all there is there. And so linear pair, adjacent and supplementary. Ooh, that's fun. Two, two pieces to that one. Hey, so then we have this linear pair postulate. Again, postulates are things that we accept because we can see that they're true, but we may not be able to show that mathematically. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. We just talked about that, adjacent and supplementary. Ooh, algebra. So hey. we have a linear pair. So we just learned up learned that those are supplementary. So supplementary, we already heard. So when we take the things, also known as angles, and we add them together. And that's because an S looks like an eight, so 180? Yes. That's not one, that's 180. <laughs> Mr. Carl, <Carlson. laughs> stop confusing them. Two X and four X is six X. 24 and 36 is 50, 60. 
and then 180. They might have gotten confused because they just said 50, 60, but that's because I added the two and the three. It took me a second to process as well. And then the four and the six. <laughs> Sorry if I confused you with that one. And then <laughs> subtract 60 from both sides and divide by six. Now, don't think we're done. What? You mean we have to do more math? We do. Does but that all we mean have to do is plug it in, plug it in. Oh, so like instead of 2x plus 24, that's 2 times 20 plus 24, which is going to be 64. When I'm 64. I knew you were going to do that. And then we had 4 times 20 instead of 4x plus 36, and that's going to be 116. That's a six, children. There you go. And you can double check by adding 64 and 116 and see if that equals 180. It does, because 64 plus 116 is 170. Do you see what I did there? <laughs> You're the worst. Ooh, an angle bisector. Uh, we've already talked about this uh, in terms of the language for segment bisectors. Um, and I know personally, I don't like thinking of those as different things. I just like the word bisector means something. And calling them different definitions is kind of silly. I agree. Uh, Let's move on. All right. So this is a bisecting question. Uh, if AC bisects angle DAB and we have that drawn. Um, I just dabbed for them. Don't worry. Cool. So what is the measure of angle dab? That's the big one. Uh, and if this is bisected, that means cut in half. Each of those pieces is going to be added together to make a whole thing. Uh, so that means that's 58. The only one that even makes remotely sense is 116. I don't even know where 87 came from. Actually, I do, but it doesn't make sense mathematically. It came from 29 plus 58. I know. I think it's if you misread oh, it. If you think the whole, whole thing, there we go. And then. And then add them up anyway. Yeah. I've, <laughs> it's a book, multiple choice yep. question. All right. The set of all points equidistant from the two endpoints of a segment. Um, that is a true statement. In a plane. Uh, not necessarily. They don't say perpendicular bisector line or plane. Okay. Uh, but you want to stay in a plane. It gets confusing otherwise. This. What are you hesitating about? Uh, that we're doing. So mathematically, this is called a locus definition for something. Uh, it's weird that we're giving the locus definition instead of the geometric one first. Oh. Syntax um, error? Yeah, it's also like we can prove this is true using uh, some not too scary things. But now I'm going down the math road that we don't need to go down. You can do it with compasses too. That's pretty fun. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, so we're saying that if this is some kind of a segment, let's call this A, B, some point C, which is going to be the midpoint of those things. Let's call that M just for midpoint funsies. Um, through this point, if we make a perpendicular line segment ray or plane or object, that is going to be a perpendicular bisector for this segment. So it's cutting it in half, so it's a bisector, and it's perpendicular. It hits at a 90 degree angle. And we have this weird theorem -y thing up there. Any point that I select on here is going to be the exact same distance from either of those two endpoints. And that is all we have for you, friends.